this video is a lecture and a demonstration about throwing bowls on the pottery wheel. Specifically, it's going to be about continuous curved bowls, which is what everybody should learn how to do before they start making other types of bowls. This is a continuous curved bowl as an example that I put out here, made by Sadi Shapiro. It's a good mixing bowl. Continuous curve is the inside curve, so there is one continuous curve that travels the entire inside of the bowl. There's no bumps or flat spots. So a good way to see how that works is to use a chain. If I hold the chain flat and then let it droop down, it naturally makes what's called a catenary curve for engineers out there. Uh, so if I pull these further apart, I get a shallower bowl with a continuous curve shallower profile of a bowl. If I bring them together, I get a very deep one. But if you look at the curve that the chain makes, it's really simple, elegant, and continuous. So if I drop this chain into this bowl and use my hands here to try to recreate the curve, I'm gonna pull it out and you guys will get a sense on the video, hopefully, of what exactly the profile of that bowl is. So it looks like that, it's basically a half of a sphere, a hemisphere, that goes down inside. So that's what we're going to focus on today. We spent the first half of the semester working on cylinder-based forms. Bowls are different. We don't want a flat bottom for a continuous curved bowl. We're going to keep that curve the whole time. That's one difference. The other difference is that it's actually really easy to make a bowl. The centrifugal force of the wheel spinning throws the clay outwards especially if you're going too fast. <laughs> but it's actually hard to make a continuous curve that doesn't have any hiccups in it. So that's what this demonstration will be all about today. And once you get the control to be able to do that, then you can really be creative with different bowl forms. So I brought some other examples to show you what I mean by that. We'll start with uh, one that hasn't been altered too much, Gary Holt Bowl out of porcelain. And if you leave the continuous curve, unaltered, no major changes like the first bowl and this one, then you get a, a, a nice elegant bowl that's very functional and very balanced. So that's great. Here's one that has been altered a little bit. I made this bowl. It has a continuous curve on the inside and then I slightly triangulated the top rim. And then when that sits, you might see a little bit of a dance going around as you see in a profile, and it adds some different geometry to the bowl, but the structure's the same. It's a continuous curve, and it works well. So that's there's that. Uh, a great bowl maker out there, Scott Parody, and I have two bowls of his that are much looser in style than the first few that I showed you. And these are thrown on the potter's wheel, but also have kind of some hand-built elements to them because he uses some alternative techniques and, and aesthetics. And it's been drastically altered. He actually alters them as he takes them off the potter's wheel and leaves these marks. But in there is a nice continuous curve. Here's one of his uh, newer forms, and it's a little bit thinner than this other bowl, just a different style. And they both have a continuous curve, even though the proportions are quite different between the two. And then I'm drinking water out of one of Scott's tumblers, and you can see that his style is there even though the structure is a very simple cylinder and a continuous curve bowl. So good examples there. there. And then one more example of some altering. That was a continuous curve that's been oval. They're pretty nice there. Not all bowls are continuous curves though. So Here's one by Andy Shaw that has a flat bottom and a real simple side. It's an elegant, simple bowl. So it's not as if every single bowl out there has a continuous curve, but all potters should uh, know how to do it. And then it can be the structure for most bowl forms and you can experiment with other things afterwards. So those are the examples that I brought out. Let's get to throwing on the wheel. I'll move these out of my way. So before I get my hands dirty and get the wheel spinning, I'll talk a little bit about tools. You want to have all your regular throwing tools um, by your side. One of your regular tools is 
probably looks like this, your, your uh, wooden rib. In my opinion, this actually isn't very useful for making a continuous curve. It has a curved side to it, but it's hard to keep it continuous without changing as you go into that bowl shape. Uh, there's lots of other ribs that have different uh, amounts of corners and curves and things. They may or may not work for, for you. They don't work for me. What works for me is something really round. So I use things like this. These are, this is like a big industrial washer. This is a tool from the ceramic studio. It's an extruder die, four inch aluminum, like a giant washer basically. And I'll demonstrate using these, but you may not have this type of thing around. Um, and so one thing that you might have is a ball jar lid. That works pretty good too. So I'll, I'll use that in my demonstration. And I usually have a small CD. I don't see that at the moment. I'll have to just use the ball jar lid then, because that's fine. There's like these little mini CDs that um, I've used as well, but those are starting to get kind of brittle because they're probably from the, the 90s. You can use a regular CD it, for a big bowl, that works good too. So those are my ribs that I'm gonna use on the inside of the bowl. You're gonna hear me talk a lot about the inside of the bowl because that's where all the focus is when you're throwing trim the outside to finish the form but the inside is really established on um, the throwing day one process so i'm going to get some clay and get it on the wheel and start talking about that this clay this clay body is called navajo wheel it's a cone six clay and it has a lot of iron in it it's very red so you'll see that i actually haven't thrown it so this will be an interesting video to see your instructor feeling a new clay body out, which is something you might experience. So I think it's good to see me do that because every clay body reacts differently to throwing. This is uh, about three pounds, which is gonna make like a, a large like noodle bowl, maybe nine inches wide or so. I usually would use about two and a half pounds for that size of bowl, but when you're learning, you want to not try to create the wall super thin, especially at the bottom. So I'm gonna throw it with some extra clay down below to hold up that continuous curve, which is what I suggest you doing. So I'm kind of increasing my size a little bit to give a better demonstration. And, um, and we'll see what happens. We'll see what it looks like. Uh, here's a little trick. I have a bat here and uh, it doesn't have any rings on it, but if I wanna center that down, I'm gonna grab a little chunk of clay from my ball, dip it in my water bucket. So I just have a little pencil here, spin my wheel and hold it and make a bullseye right there. So I think you guys can see that in the video. Now I'm gonna put my clay down onto the bullseye, spin the wheel slowly and pat it to center. So that should look familiar to you from all the cylinders that we've been doing. And now I'm ready to center. My sleeve's out of the way. Okay. So centering is no different. You can use any of the centering moves that work for you. Three pounds, I often will bring up this amount of clay by just simply pushing and giving a heel underneath and pushing it up. Another way to bring it up is to go on either side, churn my hands in so that there's pressure down at the pinkies, and then have the rest of the hand kind of catch that as well and come up. And you can see I got like a nice, not so nice, twist going on. And so let's push this down and see if I can get that a little more under control. Like I said, new clay body, and it responds differently, new clay body to me. And so I'm bearing down and forward with my right hand right there with quite a bit of pressure to try to stabilize that. A little bit of clay came off of my hand, that's okay. And so now I'm gonna come over and give myself a little more wheel speed. It's good to use a lot of speed only when you center. Don't throw with high speed later in this uh, process, but centering's okay. It helps sometimes. So, the clay doesn't feel very um, centered to me. You know, it, it's starting to get there, but it feels off. And then when that's the case, that's when I really want to bring it up and push it back down. One 
more time I'm going down to the bottom and pulling up some clay so that I have pretty good tower. Now as I go down, I'm getting that slip all over it. Now when I go down, I'll really try to get it centered. Elbows in, applying pressure, holding steady as I go down. Then when I get down to the bottom, I'm going to push down and forward in this cone shape. And then when I feel like I got it, I'm going to ease off. This clay produces a lot of slip in this clay body. When that's the case, I stop going for the water and I just use the slip as much as possible. Clays that have more uh, iron in them tend to be like that. Uh, Black Mountain is like that as well. Okay, so we're centered 95% or so. Let's open it up. So the first step of opening up a bowl is no different than a cylinder. So I'm gonna use my thumbs, go down a little ways, ease out, then I get some water. You, I, I'll use two fingers here at six o'clock and I'll go down. Now, I wanna think about the fact that I'm making a bowl. I don't wanna go down too far. I wanna leave plenty of clay at the bottom to trim the foot. So I'm gonna go for uh, about three quarters of an inch at this stage. Now I can compress it down a little bit more later. Don't make it too thin. You can always compress down. It's hard to add, or near impossible. So I have a cone inside and basically centered mound of clay. Now, I'm going to do the move we do on the cylinders, which is creating the floor. One difference. I'm not going to go in there and make a flat floor. I'm going to go in there and allow my hand to scoop up. That's the continuous curve that I'm going for. So I throw bowls. Every, people do it different ways. I throw it as a bowl from this step on. So I don't make a cylinder and then turn it into a bowl. I throw a bowl after I've opened it up. So I'm going to go in there and whoosh. this is that kind of uh, optional preliminary pull that I do on my cylinders. It works great on bowls. So I'm just going to scoop my hand towards six o'clock and up. So the inside now has a really small continuous curve inside. Okay, so now I'm ready to pull with the traditional hand positions, which is left hand on the inside, right hand on the outside, working about four o'clock. If this were a clock face, I'm looking down, there's 12, three, six. I'm gonna work right at four or so. A little bit of water in there. And uh, often I will use a sponge in my outside hand. It seems like that might work good with this clay body, so I'm gonna give it a shot. So my outside hand is holding a sponge I'm bridging over the wall and connecting with my thumb into my outside hand. So this is what my pole is gonna look like, pressure. And I'm gonna think about that continuous curve. I don't wanna go out too far. So I'm gonna think of a continuous curve that kinda of comes up at the end so that I can gently pull it outwards each step of the way. So here we go. My outside hand is gonna push in first. So look at the bottom and you'll see it get narrower. My inside hand stay in put. I'm really pushing in. So now it has a narrower bottom than the top. And I'm gonna take this opportunity to take some slip, put it up here. Okay, so that was a move that's different than a cylinder. It's already starting to look like an open form or a bowl. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab some clay by the typical pinching between the inside and outside. And now I'm going out and into that curve. And when I get about here, I'm going to think about going up. And then I'm going to ease everything off for there. So there's a preliminary pull. Now I've done one pull. And if you look at that top there, it's pretty cylindrical. That's good. Don't flare it out early. It'll flop. But I do have a narrower bottom. It's already got a, a bowl type of shape going on. And so I have all this slip, a little bit of water. Make sure there's no dry spots. I'm gonna do it again. Now, my wheel speed is much slower than I centered at, much slower. The wider you throw, the slower your wheel should be going because the RPMs are one thing, 
the actual speed is different. So the further you are away from the center of the wheel, the faster the clay is going for any given RPM. So with open forms like bowls, spin the wheel slowly. So I'm gonna slow down a little bit here. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is with my hands feel. Okay, my wall is pretty even. I have a little bit of extra clay actually right in, the, right in here. I don't wanna thin this area at the bottom out too much. It'll flop, it'll, it'll fold. And that might even happen in this video with this new clay and everything. But um, what I'll do is focus my pressure much more a little ways up. I don't have to start at the very bottom and grab all of that. That can just remain there and it can trim it off later. That's a good way to make a bowl. Give yourself extra support of clay at the bottom. Focus on the inside, getting the upper part of the wall the way you want it. So really I'm gonna pull from this point up. Here we go. Slow my wheel down a bit and I'm allowing it to come out. And then up at the end. Not too far out at the lip because that'll cause it to wanna fold over. So what I'm looking at now is the inside. Clean it out. I wish I could show you the inside of the bowl, but I have no camera person. <laughs> so we'll do the best we can and I'll explain it. And later, I'll actually cut it open and you guys can see. So this is where the ribs come into play. So let's use my ball jar lid just to show you. You might have this or something like it. I'm gonna put this inside there and I'm gonna hold it and with two hands, and you can see this, I'm gonna back it up a little bit. So it's like that, the backward angle is really important. And then it grabs the wall, and I'm gonna to work towards three o'clock in that continuous curve. So I'm gonna start in the inside, the bottom, and then now I'm working my way up the wall. When I go up, I need to be really careful not to push too hard, because the clay at the bottom is supported, right? When you get up into the wall of the bowl, it's unsupported below it. That's why bowls are tricky. Gravity can make them fall. Pressure from the inside really can make them fall. So I went in there, plenty of pressure at the bottom to compress the middle, thin it out a little bit too, just a little. And then as I went up, I said, okay, don't continue to push out, just hold steady and go up and create a, a continuous curve. I have a little bit of a bump in there, which is very common. And it, and it often takes several rounds with the rib, with the round rib to get it. So I'm gonna go back. I can look and I have inside, right here, you can probably even see it on the outside. On the outside, it's going in. It means that it's a bump on the inside. I'm gonna push just that one spot with my rib. So I'm gonna push that out. Now I'm feeling better about my curve and I can kind of follow all the way down into the middle. And when I reach the middle, I can start to push harder because it's supported down there. And then I'm gonna go back up one more time. And all the way through with very light pressure, just holding steady. And I can stretch this bowl out a little bit at this stage, okay? So it's looking okay, and I'm gonna cut it and show you in a moment. Sometimes the rib leaves a little bit of harsh lines in there. And so I'll use a sponge, some water or slip and go over the surface really lightly. This is not to change the curve. This is to change the surface. Put some water or slip and it gives it a much more fluid surface, much nicer than uh, some of the harshness of a dry rib sometimes. And when you put the water on there, you can also sometimes see imperfections in your curve with the reflection of the water. I see one. I'm going to go in there and clean it up a little bit. Now here's a question. Can you overdo it with ribs? Yeah, definitely. You can overdo bowls by overworking them. You'll drive yourself crazy getting that 100% perfect curve on a lot of bowls. Sometimes you luck out and you get it. Uh, my advice is to, to give it your best effort a few times and then accept it and move on. Because often, if you keep at it, you'll push it out too far and you'll really lose it. And the 
and the curve is really about the structure and it's really important to get it as close as you can but tiny little irregularities don't fret over those yeah i don't think that's helpful at all okay so we have a bowl here i use my hands as a measuring tool it's my hands are about nine inches here and so that's kind of what i was going for this bowl bowl is definitely thicker than i normally throw um which is good because i think it would be my suggested thickness when we cut it open i'm guessing we'll have to see um, so i'm just going to clean up the wheel a little bit you know, one thing I didn't do at all was um, set the lip. It didn't really need it based on how I threw and it looks kind of nice, but for good measure, I'll show you that um, I'll use a chamois here, rest it on there, grab that rim. There's a lot of slip up there and you soften it. And I can shape the rim a little bit too doing this. We'll keep this one real simple. Thickens it, compresses it, shapes it slightly. That's a good deal. And we're not going to keep this bowl, we're going to cut it so I don't have to fret about it too much. Okay, good enough. Good enough. I'm going to take a tool and clean off my bat. So, if I, one thing I did not do was look at the outside the whole time. It's not about how the outside looks on a bowl. If you have extra clay, you'll see it that you can trim off later. So even if the outside is not a perfect curve, if the inside is good, then you're on your way. You can trim that off. So I'll do another video to trim a bowl with a continuous curve and you'll get that part of it. here. Okay, so if I were to keep this bowl without cutting it and showing you, there's a couple ways, right? I could just pop the whole bat off the wheel. But run your wire under it before you do that. Always run a wire before you take your pieces off to firm up. Um, and then I actually slide and lift bowls off too. Um, I was taught that you can never do that because it'll collapse. But once you get used to it, you totally can. So I might show you that on the next one I make. So I'm gonna clean off my hands right now. And then at the risk of looking like a pyromaniac, I'm gonna return with a big torch <laughs> because I wanna set this so it firms up real quickly so I can cut it without it collapsing. That's my plan. We'll see how it goes. So bear with me for a moment. Okay, so I'm going to get my wheel spinning slowly so I can use a torch on it. Don't try this at home. Put my safety glasses on. No, you can't fire your pots that way, but you can firm them up. And uh, it's dangerous if the clay is not moving. If the wheel's spinning and you know, you're know uh, you careful with where you point that flame, if the flame just hits the clay, what'll happen is um, it'll really firm it up quickly. You'll see a lot of steam coming off. I'm waiting for a moment for that moisture to equalize out. And let's see, we'll see how this goes. It might be firm enough. We might get a little floppy, I can still show you, but it helps a lot. Otherwise, this thing would totally collapse. So just like we did with the cylinders, I'm gonna cut it in half, and then we can look at it. Okay. So, 
So that's the, the profile. I think you'll probably see it a little better on the one on the wheel. So let me move it over, collapse that. And let's see how I did. So there's the extra clay. It actually would have been better if I even kept that all the way there. I really pushed it with my outside hand and pulled it up, right? That was a little dangerous for that to come down. It held up just fine, but you can see the wall is, is slightly tapered and that's okay on a bowl. That's totally okay on a bowl. And um, this would be like a nice um, sturdy bowl, not super thin walled. All different bowls are great. You know, you can have a delicate bowl, you can have a sturdy bowl. They all serve their purpose. So that is the continuous curve that I went for there. Something like, like that. Is it perfect? No, but it is a good structure. It's close. And that is what you want to go for when you're throwing a continuous curve bowl, which, like I mentioned in the beginning, is really the, the kind of frame of a lot of bowls, whether they're altered, kept simple, or otherwise. There's lots of stuff you can do. So let me throw one more. If you feel like you've got it and you've seen enough, then you can stop it now. But if you want to see another one, I'm going to do that with a little bit more clay. And I'll use the, the next one I throw. I'll, uh, I'll keep it and I'll do a trimming demo tomorrow after it firms up. So, I got my clay here. This one's about four pounds. I have a nice bullseye from the previous pot, so I can just put that down there. See how this one feels. Each ball of clay often feels different. First time that you throw a certain clay body, uh, it might take a few times to get used to it. Like this one really does a twist on me when I do my first move. So I really gotta focus in the beginning of the centering. See that twist? I'm gonna push forward and hold steady. Try to get that out of there, there it goes. Now I'll ease off. I got a real point there. <laughs> and that was like that kind of karate chop. There's so many ways to hold your hands to center, and, um, and it's good to not just rely on one particular exact way because different amounts of clay, different sizes, are going to respond differently to the different hand positions uh, and just each individual lump of clay. So the last one I really had to bring up and down a lot. This one, I'm uh, really focusing on pushing down and forward with some good force from 6 o'clock forward maybe five o'clock and I don't really it doesn't feel like to me like it needs to come up and down all that much but maybe I'll do one up okay so I'm gonna try to learn from the first one that I made it was actually helpful for me to cut that open and see I'm gonna try to leave a little bit more at the very very bottom and then uh, pull it up into a continuous curve and I want this one to be larger than nine inches wide which is that measurement on my hand. Okay, so I'm opening it up. I'm going down a bit. If you're off center at this stage, spend some time centering it. Even now, I can put a hand inside, bridge over the top, hold steady, ease out. Don't just keep moving on if you're off center. Especially with, well, not just especially, but bowls, if you're off center, you're gonna get this thing going on and all of a sudden, boom, it'll fall. Because if it's just simply being off center, it's not even and the gravity exerts itself. Okay, so I am ready to pull my inside hand into that curve. So this is how I do it. From the middle to six o'clock. And I allow both hands to actually come outwards. I'm allowing my hands together to drift up to six in a curve. Do you have to do it this way? No. You could figure out how to do it with the typical inside outside hand position for pulling up the wall and do the same thing. This is the way that I do it and it works good for me for that first one. Whatever you do, I suggest 
creating the inside curve from this stage. No flat floors, no corners for a continuous curve. All right. And so now I can even do a little centering right now by bridging it over the top, holding steady, easing off. I gotta tell myself, slow my wheel down because I've opened it up. I don't need fast speed anymore. And last time I really pushed that bottom in, maybe a little more than I needed to. So this time I'm not gonna do that quite as much, uh, but I will a bit. So I'm gonna push in from the outside, right? And this helps you grab some clay from the bottom, just like a cylinder. You do wanna grab some clay from the bottom, just not too much. Okay, so now I'm ready. I'm locked in, my wheel's going kind of slow, medium slow, and I'm pulling up the wall and I'm going out into that curve. And then about here, I think about going up. I don't wanna to go too far out. And so I come back up. Yeah, so I got quite a bit more clay down here than the previous one. Let's see how this goes. All right, so I can still bridge over. Whenever I can bridge my thumb over, I do, so I can lock in. But when they get bigger, I can't do that, and I have to tuck it in there and get on the inside. Um, I think I have one more pull with my bridged thumb. You notice something different than last bowl, or I just noticed something different. So much of this is unconscious. I'm not using the outside sponge. I'm just using my fingers. I don't know why. It just seemed like that felt like what, what would work well for this particular uh, bowl, and it's working for me. So I'm not very consistent in exactly how I hold tools and what I do each individual step. So much of it's about feel. Find what works for you. Okay, so I'm at the bottom. I'm locking in with some pressure. And I'm pulling into that curve. Slow my wheel down a bit. And I'm gonna ease off at the top. What you want to avoid, I'm gonna show you what to avoid. Don't do this right now. See that lip? I just flared it out. You can have that at the end, but don't do it too early. Now I gotta deal with it. Um, because what'll happen if you get too much of that is the gravity will pull that down and you'll get like this uh, slumping. That's the danger of throwing bowls is having it slump, having gravity shape it instead of you. Okay, so Lots of extra clay down here. I got a, a decent curve in there, actually. Sometimes you can make a continuous curve bowl without ribs at all. And sometimes those are really nice because they might have the natural finger marks and things. So you don't have to use those round ribs. I'm gonna try one where I use a sponge on the inside and I can gently push where I see a little lump and try to create my curve that way. What you don't have is like a hard edge to really grip the clay or kind of compress it. So it's it's limiting in how much you can do. Yeah, I think I need a rip. <laughs> so I'm gonna use this, this aluminum one here. I like the hole in the middle because I can hold my hand there like that. So you might be able to go to a hardware store and get the biggest washer they have. going into the middle and then now as I go up the wall I'm making sure I don't push too hard I just hold really steady and I'm gonna let this one come out a bit and I'm gonna go one more time and if I see a lump I push on that lump and I try to go all the way down into the center and I'm gonna allow this one to leave a little bit of mark from the rib because this one is much nicer than the ball jar in terms of the surface. Both of them gave me a good structure, but this one the surface. And so now I'm just gonna go in with the wet sponge and kind of redistribute a little bit of the slip and surface. So now I'm going to do something. Um, I'll talk about two things. Maybe I will show you if I wanted to leave things extremely simple, then 
all I would need to do on this one is possibly trim a little bit now. I left so much more clay than the previous one. And so let's do that. But I'm not going to try to do too much. If you do too much, you'll get some altering of your curve. But it's nice to clean up a little bit if you can do it without changing anything on the inside. Because it'll make trimming so much nicer of a task when you start with a pot that's not too gooey and flared on the bottom. So I just trimmed a little bit. That's all I need to do there. And so I could set the lip on this like I did the other one, call it a simple bowl. But I'm gonna do something to show you that once you have the structure, you can, you can start to individualize them a little bit. I'm gonna take a sponge and I'm gonna go back in and make sure I don't have any dry spots on the first few inches. I have a nice curve on the inside. Then as it goes up to the wall, it's okay, but it's got some ridges and things that uh, don't really relate to anything else. So I'm gonna try to go in with my sponge and my fingers about halfway through and try to give it a little bit of a throwing line continuing up and I brought it out a little bit so now it's a wider bowl and it has some throwing lines that start to gently appear halfway up the wall and carry up into the to the rim and I think it's it's a little bit more uh, gestural a little bit more fluid as a form not as mechanical and so now I'm just gonna set the rim If your rim is really thin, like mine was relatively thin for the side, for the thickness of this pot, it's not strong and it can easily crack. If you can thicken up either your, your rim or just below your rim, much, much stronger bowl. But it left some lines beneath and below above that that I don't like, so I'm just gonna gently get rid of those. Oops, that is not good. I uh, dropped some slip in there for my dirty hand, so I'll just carry it up, that's okay. And then out here, it doesn't look so good. Let's not worry about it too much. I think we got a good, good bowl here. Okay, so to take this bowl off the wheel, it is soft clay. This Navajo wheel clay was soft out of the bag, which is really nice. But the softer the clay you throw, the less it'll hold itself up if I tried to slide this thing off or um, lift it or anything like that. It would alter the form. So I don't need to do that. I would just take the bat off. So I'm, before I take the bat off, I clean it up real good with the tool so you don't have all this uh, slip and clay that dries into dust and all that. Clean your bat first with the wheel spinning. Take your wire tool, hold it like dental floss. Make sure that your fingers are wider than your bowl so you don't bump it. That's a little different. Uh, ooh, there's some slip again. Last last call for fixing slip. Okay. Running my wire underneath the bottom with the wheel spinning slowly. And then, let's clean off my hands. And hopefully I can show you here without messing things up too much. So there you could possibly see the inside of the bowl, those throwing lines, the gentle ones I was talking about. And there's a continuous curve in there. And it's got plenty to trim, lots to trim, which I will do in the next video which I'll have to uh, film tomorrow after this firms up. So I think I covered what I wanted to in this video to review, right? We talked about throwing bowls, continuous curves as being the structure for bowls that can be kept simple or they can be the structure for altered bowl forms. Then um, we talked about centering is very similar, opening up, but then once you start to create the floor, it's not really a floor. You're gonna create a curve on the inside and then pull up the wall without going too far out, a little bit upwards until you get your final shape.
focus on the inside, use round ribs if you have them to push into a nice curve on the inside. Clean up things with your sponge or your hands. Leave extra clay at the bottom that you'll trim off later and you'll be on your way to making a bowl. So thank you very much for watching and 